thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure to be with you, Ambika. All right, uh, Tarun, let's get down to the business of weddings. Uh, how many brides do you see in a regular year, and what's the number in comparison? You know, we're we're not only a bridal company, so I'd say we do a few hundred brides a year, and in the couture we do about between 150 to 200. Which not only 150, 200 different women, they might do multiple outfits for their different functions. We are our, 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 our business is divided into off the rack bridal, where they go into the stores and they're helped by the fashion consultants and the couture, which is much more bespoke and can be tweaked to them and there's much more leeway and it's, you know, uh, a whole lot of other things. The numbers are growing because whether we like it or not, fashion is moving to much more casual space and uh, bridal is the one time that everyone seems to dress up and it's the one big Indian thing that, uh, you know, people need multiple outfits for that would otherwise be quite casual. And uh, what is, the, so you mentioned the number on a regular year. What is, what are the numbers uh, this year? Well, you know, this year, of course, it's significantly lower because we've been in lockdown from March and almost nothing happened through April and May. And then once we opened, not that the stores opened right away, but then there was some activity. I mean, there was some activity even in April and May, but not quite. You couldn't ship, you know, your factory was sealed. Uh, the stores were shut. There's nothing you can do, you know. Um, but we caught up a bit. Uh, we're still keeping our head over water, which I'm very impressed with because I thought it'd be much worse. And as you know, we've just done our big digital showing of the fall festive winter collection, which includes our bridal. The couture pieces will be shown after another month. And now they're quite active with three, four, five appointments a day. It's a new world. It's a new way of engaging. And the appointments are digital. Once people have decided what they want, then their parents usually will accompany or allow these girls or boys to come up. It's different if they're in Delhi or Mumbai. But even in Mumbai, it's complicated because you're not allowed to go more than two kilometers from your house now. I mean, if you stop by the cops, you can't say, I'm going to find a bridal in South Bombay. So basically, I think what's happening at the moment is that from all other cities, they will come up for the day. So we've got a lot of appointments and they're filling up. That it's all specifically bridal. There's almost no one coming in who does not have a wedding. It's all about brides, grooms, and then their immediate family. I don't know a single person who's been or thought about shopping for anything other than Lululemon or pajamas, you know, to sit stuff that they sit around at home. And so, and uh, what kind of weddings are these people having? Well, naturally, the weddings that we've done so far, we did some weddings that happened during the lockdown as well. They got shipped before or right afterwards. They're much smaller. They have to be. Uh, it's a law. So, you know, you'd be silly to, you know, contradict it. Uh, and I think there was a big scene where there was some uh, chief minister or ex-chief minister of Karnataka's son's wedding and people went with masks and the numbers were exceeded. So I think that set a good example and a precedent to people that you would be taken to task. And, you know, nothing is private anymore. There's always somebody clicking something and sending images out. So people have to realize it's for their own good. Good Brides don't really have budgets anymore because that's the only thing they're spending on. I mean, I'm you, and the weddings are at home. It's not even intimate. It's much more personal. It's much more simple. So I think that now the weddings that have been planned for October, November, they're becoming dressier. But thus far, the immediate weddings were much finer. I thought it would be more ratioed, much more fine because people are not going to be going into a ballroom with 3,000 people. So the need to be blinged out or overdressed or the insecurity about what other people are wearing is not there. So what about the Karigar? What, what are they doing? The ones who left? I mean, how are they managing uh, financially? A lot of people have gone back to their villages. You see, a lot of the units we use are in the villages, uh, in, in smaller towns. I don't know what they're doing. I'm telling you, there's a lot of stress. What could they possibly be doing? So that there are other jobs, you know. And, and this is a ripple effect through all industries. It's not as if they can become daily wage laborers or do anything else. These options don't exist. So everyone's living off their savings and the largest of people have employed them till such time as the markets revive. That's all that's going to happen. Nothing else. 
uh, taking you from that uh, last question, in the future, do you see um, this sense of intimate weddings staying on? Uh, do you see more zero waste weddings? Or you think once it's all over, business is booming, the pandemic and, and how we are at the moment would be forgotten? Well, you know, the thing is, I mean, for instance, uh, you know, I have a son who might get married next year, and I've always told him for 20 years there should be 200 people max at the wedding, and it should be two nights, one hosted by your bride, one hosted by us. And I've never understood these multi-thousand people things. It's very good for business. They're big, they're impersonal, they're very loud. There's a lot of sensory overload. So people like me were never going to do that anyway. Uh, I think a lot of the people I know, and the best weddings I've been to, in fact, have had two or three hundred people max, barring a few where the scale was so spectacular for organization. But if it's impersonal and it goes on and on, I mean, what good is it? So I think that I don't think people will forget that soon. I think people have been jolted into a lot of reality. I think the bubble of many decades of unbridled growth uh, have suddenly crashed. I think a lot of corruption has come to the fore. I think that this has forced some wisdom and some reflection. I don't think there's anything wrong with people spending their own money any which way they please. And no one wants to say yes or no, or right or wrong. But I think they'll be a little more circumspect and do it in a more classy than just in an ostentatious way. I think India went very far, fast from being socialist into this bravado capitalist thing. and. So I think maybe that was also part of the problem. I think these air brakes definitely will find a way that they could be even more luxurious and more elegant, but not just showy for the sake of it. Wonderful, Tarun. Thank you so much. We've done... My pleasure. It's been under 10 minutes.